Hello dear students, welcome to our fourth lesson and today we are going to look at separation of colored substances. Plants occurring naturally in our environment contain several pigments or what we call the colors. For example, green leaves or green grass are composed of different substances with different pigments or colors. Propanon, which is moving solvent, is used to dissolve the coloring matter in those plants. Each colored matter has a different solubility in propanon and have a different extent of adsorption on the filter paper. The uh, filter paper is the adsorbent material. So because of different solubility, then the colors or the pigments are separated. Note, adsorption is a process of attracting molecules, i.e. liquid or gas molecules being attracted onto the surface of a solid molecules like those of the filter paper. So there is attraction between the gas or liquid to the molecules of the filter paper. As the propanon spread, the pigments with which are more soluble and less adsorbent, they are not attracted now to the filter paper, are carried farthest. While those that are less soluble in propanon, the moving solvent, and more adsorbent to the filter paper, they are more attracted to the filter paper molecules, they are carried shortest distance. The farthest point where the solvent reach on the adsorbent material, the filter paper, is called solvent front. Experiment, separation of pigments. Crush some leaves or grass in a mortar using a pestle. Add propanol as you continue crushing the leaves or glass to dissolve and extract plant pigments. Decard the extract into a beaker. Then place a filter paper on top of an empty clean beaker. Then using a dropper, place one drop of an extract at the center of the filter paper and allow it to spread as far as possible. Add a second and a third drop at the same spot. Each time allow the extract to spread as far as possible. As soon as the spot of the extract has stopped spreading, it means it is concentrated spot. Add the solvent dropwise each time allowing the solvent to spread. Continue until it spreads out close to the edge. So we have the filter paper here. We place it on a clean empty beaker and then we put a concentrated spot of the pigment. Then you continue then you add now the moving solvent which is propanol and as you do that then it will spread out and form the solvent front then the colors will be separated depending on their solubility to the moving solvent that is propanol paper strip can be used to separate pigments Instead of using the filter paper, which is circular, we can use paper strip. Concentrating a spot is done the same way as was done on a filter paper. So we have this one as paper strip. We have our spot, concentrated spot here. Then we have the filter paper and this is a baseline. So we have the baseline here. Then we have the filter papers. Then we have the solvent front. As a paper strip is then placed on a beaker containing a solvent. So this method of separation is known as chromatography, where chroma means color. Hence chromatography means study of colors. The colored matter in leaves separate into two distinct pigments, a green color due to the substance called chlorophyll and a yellow color due to the substance called exthanophile. Exthanophile is more soluble 
in propanol solvent and less adsorbent to the filter paper molecules. Hence, it is carried the farthest point from the baseline of the spot. So it is carried the farthest, so it is more soluble. Because it's more soluble, it moves with the move with the moving solvent. Therefore, we have green color is less soluble in the solvent and more adsorbent to the paper molecules. So in this case, it moves the shortest distance from the baseline. The dry filter paper showing the spread separated colors or pigments is called chromatogram. Here we have the chromatogram, we have moving solvent, we have the solvent front here, we have the yellow color or hexanophile because this one is more soluble and less adsorbent to the filter paper molecules. While green color chlorophyll moves the shortest distance because it is more adsorbent to the filter paper and less soluble to the moving solvent that is propanol. We have when we have paper strip and we get the same results. Chromatography can be used to determine the presence of substance in a mixture by comparing it with a pure substance. The suspect mixture is placed on adsorbent material or medium alongside the pure substance of the same baseline as shown below. Uh, a is a pure substance control and B is a mixture of substance. So we have a setting paper chromatography. We have A as a pure substance or the control and this one is the suspected uh, mixture. Now we have the spots and then you place it in a beaker containing the moving solvent and then separates out like that. The solvent is allowed to ascend to the top solvent front. The paper is then removed and allowed to dry to form this chromatogram. The position of the spots are noted. A spot from the mixture B, this one, that move the same distance as pure spot A, so this is a pure spot A, it moves together with that one, indicated that B has a component in A and another one. So this one has a component here and something else. That is why we have two spots, meaning this was not pure. Therefore, if a sample A was an illegal drug, assume this was an illegal drug, okay, and B was a sample of urine from an athlete, it simply means the athlete is under the influence of illegal drug, this one, because they moved at the same distance from the baseline. Example one, the chromatograph below was obtained from a contaminated food sample P. Contaminants, we have Q, R, S, and T are suspected to be in P. Use it to answer the following questions. So we have this is the P, which is contaminated food sample. Then we have the contaminants Q, R, S, T. Identify the contaminant in mixture P. So we want to know. So what you hear you do, you draw a line to see which one match or which one moved the same distance with this one. So when you draw, you'll find that one that moved the same distance and that one. So the contaminant in P are therefore R and T. So those are the contaminants. Then which is the most soluble and less adsorbent contaminant in P? Meaning most soluble, it will move a big distance, less adsorbent, then it means this one will move the farthest. So in this case, the T is the one that moved farthest from the baseline. So this is a baseline. So it moves to the farthest distance. So it is more soluble and less adsorbent to the filter paper or maybe paper strip. Example two, 
we have samples of urine from three athletes J K L were spotted on a chromatography paper alongside two illegal drugs B1 and B2. A chromatograph was run using methanol and a chromatograph shown below was obtained. So we have these are the illegal drugs B1 and B2 and then we have the athletes who is JKL. Identify the athlete who had used an illegal drug. In this case we have no these are the illegal drugs so you draw a line to see which matches the same distance so in this case when you match you're going to find that this one is the one who had taken this illegal drug so b2 identify the other so k is the one that had taken the illegal drug b2 which drug is less soluble in methanol so less soluble in methanol means it moved a shorter distance so b2 moved a shorter distance the procedure is known as ascending paper chromatography you'll find that the moving solvent moves up ascending application in sports chromatography is used to identify prohibited drugs or banned substance for example steroids in urine or blood samples in pharmaceuticals industry to test purity of drugs in food industry to identify contaminants in food and drinks and in cosmetic industry to identify harmful substances note adsorption involves binding of molecules all particles of gas or liquid to the surface of a solid like the filter paper molecule it is temporary and reversible process it differs from adsorption which is filling of pores in a solid here is the assignment for you work it out make sure that you remember and get everything right thank you and wish you success